Okay guys, we're gonna break down today's stream, which yes, was a tad bit underwhelming. But between the lines, we will be slowing down some gameplay, taking a look at some subclass changes, some returning weapons, some artifact mods, as well as the new six player activity, the Sundial. We also have a roadmap. So first up, let's just take a look at the roadmap here. In front of us, December 10th is when Season of Dawn actually launches. That's next Tuesday. We'll have the new seasonal PVE mode, the Sundial, and then it says the Sundial, Narul, the Hollow Voice. Now start Starting on the 17th, we have the Nessus and EDZ Obelisk. So we saw this yesterday. Pretty sure the one we saw in the trailer looked to be an obelisk that's going to be found on the Tangle Shore. But this one just says for Nessus and the EDZ. We also have the Sundial Osletic. Oslect? I don't know, man. That's a difficult name. But it goes by the title, the Sky Piercer. Sounds sexy. Next to it is Save a Legend, which is obviously us reviving Saint-14. Then we have the Dawning Event also launching from the 17th through the 14th. 14th of January. Now notice the Iron Banner icon. Now the armor looks to be the same. So no refresh and vendor there for our Iron Banner armor. But look at the weapons. We have an Iron Banner bow, an Iron Banner hand cannon that does not look like Krimmel's dagger. That looks like something else. And then what appears to be a shotgun that the warlock is holding. Either way it goes, we've got some new Iron Banner weapons, or at least it appears to be some new Iron Banner weapons. That'll be launching on the 24th of December, so Christmas Eve. We also have the Sundial, the Tazarok, the Sun Eater, which going by the look looks to be the solar scion flare then starting on the 7th of january we have the legendary version of the sundial along with the exotic quest devil's ruin which will be launching now this is the exotic sidearm damn kind of a bummer right i really wish we could have got these exotics earlier this is gonna be on the 7th of january we need these exotics in our hand before christmas now january 28th we have the exotic quest bastion or bastion bastion now somebody confirmed it yesterday i think it was cactus that it is a fusion rifle and we thought it was a fusion rifle tube just because like the the reticle the way it lined up made us think that it was actually charging up so it did look like a fusion rifle now starting on february the 4th we have the empyrean foundation as well as the scion flare in notum in no tim i am so terrible at this and then of course crimson days starts on the 11th through the 18th of february and that's pretty much the calendar for season nine not a lot happening not gonna lie boys that is not a lot of stuff Whew. but let's keep moving first up we have a hunter with the new armor as well as the new weapons. Gotta say, looking pretty slick. Unfortunately, we didn't get to see any of these weapons, but Tomo here did take us into the new artifact, the Lantern of Osiris. And this was pretty interesting. First up, we paused over the new mod, Guardian Angel. Grants a chance to generate healing orbs for you on scout rifle, sniper rifle, bow, and linear fusion rifle precision final blows. Now, how much that healing orb actually heals you? No idea. Also, it says it grants a chance. It's not gonna be an automatic orb with every Every one of those kills but for those times i guess you are playing aggressively especially with these precision based weapons having a hilly orb drop for you while you're simultaneously making a push could offer some playmaking potential now when we take a look at the first column here they've actually moved our anti-barrier mods as well as our unstoppable and overload mods to this column they said they wanted to make sure that people have access to these mods early that way everyone can hit those activities as soon as possible now notice we have anti-barrier ranger here this is actually a mod that applies shield piercing rounds to our bows scout rifles as well as pulse rifles so like this season was like auto rifles smgs hand cannons now we're moving to bow scout rifles and pulse rifles okay we also got unstoppable shot this can be applied to our scout rifle and underneath it we have unstoppable bursts these unstoppable rounds can be applied to our pulse rifles now moving on right here in the second column we already have some enhanced perks and yes we have some new enhanced perks that we don't even have in the game and here's the thing I don't know if these are going to become available to be earned and applied to gear separate from this artifact or if this is just going to be something provided from our artifact but first up we have enhanced unflinching rifle aim which greatly reduces the flinch from incoming fire while aiming any rifle class weapon again we do not have this currently in the game but combine this with the sweet business catalyst and the ability to lay on the trigger all day long oh my god now underneath it we have enhanced bow loader enhanced sniper rifle loader and enhanced 
linear fusion targeting. Now again, all of those mods are present currently. The upside of these is they cost less. Time to get out some Queen Breakers bow boys. Now at the top here, we have enhanced rifle loader. And again, very interesting because Bungie, number one, doesn't have enhanced rifle loader in the game. And number two, this is more of a general mod. So now we have an enhanced general mod. It seems like they're really trying to push us to use rifle based weapons, which could actually signify a potential auto rifle buff. I'm just saying guys, we have a lot of things boosting rifle based weapons. So anything rifle based could be on the table for a potential buff next week. Now moving on, we got to actually look at the activity mod socket, which is going to be found on your new armor inside a season of dawn. And this is when things really take a twist. First up, this first mod states become charged with light by finishing a combatant, consuming one tenth of your super energy. And note that it's called empowered finish. Now next to it is shield break charge. You can become charged with light by breaking an enemy shield with a matching energy type. And to the right here, it's called precisely charged. Become charged with light by getting multiple rapid precision final blows with linear fusion rifles or sniper rifles. Now notice that it shows a minus 10 there in discipline. So Bungie is actually deeming this mod so powerful, or I guess the status of being charged so powerful that they actually want to hurt our discipline, which is kind of interesting there. Now next to it, we actually have a mod called high energy fire. While charged with light, you gain a bonus to weapon damage. Each defeated enemy consumes one stack of charge with light. Okay, so obviously the main thing to take away from this is that you can have a whole set here of armor. Some of your armor pieces within that set have the mods that allow us to obtain charge, while other armor pieces allows us to consume those charges or those stack of charges. I guess the question is, what is the max stack of charges that we can get? The mod next to it is called Protective Light. While charged with light, you gain a significant damage resistance against combatants when your shields are destroyed. This effect consumes all stacks of charge with light, and the more stacks consumed, the longer the damage resistance lasts. Now, notice that this one actually gives us a minus 10 in strength. This is actually extremely interesting, guys. Like, I don't know what the perfect synergy loop here is. Would applying more of these mods to get multiple stacks be the way to go? Is there a max to some of these stacks of charged light? I'm assuming there is, because I don't think you can just get these indefinitely. Also, considering the potency of like high energy fire and protective light, this could really change the game up. And how do these apply to things like PvP? This is an activity mod, so I'm assuming it's only going to be utilized within PvE, but it doesn't necessarily specify. It doesn't say like nightmare hunts or the raid encounters. Now, to actually get the charge, the green mods do state that you have to either finish enemies or match an energy type with the breaking of an enemy shield. But like the one that states getting rapid precision final blows with linear fusion rifles or sniper rifles, you can also get charged with light. So I'm under the assumption that it may be possible to utilize some of these mods in PvP too. But again, if it says combatants, then more than likely that's PvE. If it says just enemies though, that can actually mean PvP too. But again, I'm almost 80% sure this is just going to be utilized in PvE. We'll just leave the 20% out there just in case. Now, moving on, we have the finishers. I don't know. They really emphasize finishers. I don't mind them. I don't really use them all that much. Obviously, they're going to become more and more beneficial, though, as they're really tying into the artifact mods. But you can actually favorite these finishers to certain key binds as well as your controller. That way, you can swap between which one you want to look flashy with. Now, moving on, let's get into the sandbox stuff because we did see some sandbox gameplay right here in front of us we see tomo on his hunter now now by the way before we even get into that yes sparrows are on mercury i don't know how much mercury has expanded but you will now be able to use your sparrow here now the first vex we see here in front of us notice he gets a precision shot and it procs two stacks of practice makes perfect which we saw that in the sandbox notes that practice makes perfect actually lasts longer but gives less energy per second but each precision kill or shot hit grants you two stacks of practice makes perfect but notice a Above it when he got the precision kill the new knock him down perk activates and this actually increases both weapon stability and ads speed now the initial timer is 10 seconds there i was really hoping he was going to get a second kill because the second kill is actually supposed to increase that timer to 25 seconds so this is like another way of proccing something along the lines of frontal assault without the damage buff but you still get the stability buff as well as the increase in ads speed and it actually can max out at 25 seconds now we also get to see some of the 
finishers at play. Again, man, they really wanted to show us these finishers. Now, moving on. The next squad actually showed gameplay of the new six-player activity, the Sundial. Now, the main thing we want to take away from this is number one, yes, you're seeing it in the flesh. Prophecy weapons are returning to us with random ropes. Things like Jack, Queen, King, Infinite Pass. What was the other one? Prodigy. There was a lot of good prophecy weapons, man. West of Sunfall is probably going to return in some way. Either way it goes, those were solid guns for year one. I'm hoping to God that we actually have some new perks launching this season. Like, I love these weapons are returning to us with random rolls, but they need some new spicy perks, man. But right here, we actually have the Warlock in action. Notice he's taken to the sky a bunch. Right there, he actually throws a grenade here at this Cabal. And during the process of killing him, he actually completely recharges his melee. Now, the melee does not track, but it does move pretty quickly. And it looks like it has a pretty decent AoE effect. A lot of people were saying it should do more damage. But again, these are some meaty targets they're going up against. And again, during this process, I was hoping he was going to double dash because you can actually double Icarus dash. He only did it once. So we didn't get to see it in its full effect or how evasive it could be. It almost seems like it's got a little more kick to it. I don't know. I don't play top tree Dawn Blade a bunch. It just seemed like it had a little more reach to it. Now, moving on, just looking at weapons, we actually got to see the rocket launcher at play. It had tracking, and we're actually going to talk about some of the perks that we saw on it. It was really interesting. But we also saw the sidearm, and that's obviously like the sidearm related to Saint-14. It had that 14 insignia on it. But taking a real quick look at that rocket launcher itself, he pulls it out with his health being a tad bit low, and notice there at the bottom left, underdog is procced. First up, underdog on a rocket launcher. Might actually be good. I actually got confused on stream i was thinking of underdog back in destiny 1 which would boost range underdog actually boosts the reload speed as your health gets lower and considering that reload speed is extremely important this may be super beneficial here for rocket launchers now i have not actually tested this extensively but it looks like we're gonna have to test it considering it can become a top tier perk next season now moving on they go into the sundial itself and this thing is actually pretty dangerous like watch out where you stand because it'll just kill you but this is kind of like menagerie 2.0 which is a different setting you've got orbs you got to pick up you throw it at the champions to pop their shields now notice the warlock melee here i just said it a second ago that it didn't have tracking but look it does track I wonder if you just have to look at your target when you throw your melee. Like, just look at it long enough for it to actually heat seek. Or maybe there's like a certain distance in which the melee has to travel before it actually heat seeks. Again, guys, there are so many melee based perks. Can you imagine proccing something like one two punch on an enemy and then send a tracking solar based melee toward another enemy? You see where I'm coming with this? Even inside of PvP, if you take the time to proc one two punch, this could be considerably nasty. Anyways, notice that he's drifting, he's drifting, and then he he consumes his grenade. This is actually going to be a new ability for the Warlock class called Heat Rises. And it actually allows you to consume your grenade to extend your glide time, but it dramatically reduces in-air accuracy penalties for all weapons. Now, the main thing to take away from that, notice your sight here on the sidearm. Notice how it's kind of fat, kind of fat, kind of fat. I mean, it's not really fat, but you know where I'm coming from. It's a little wide, right? And then all of a sudden he consumes his grenade and then it kicks in. That's the same look that Icarus actually gives us. Now, I guess the real question is, is how does Heat Rises stack with something like Icarus? Do we just get stupid in-air accuracy? I don't know. That's a good question. But notice underneath him, while Heat Rises is activated, he is glowing. He's got a nice burning effect on his feet, which does look pretty. It definitely gives away your position, though. I mean, in PvP, people are going to see that from a mile away. So be prepared. I do want to mention, he does reproc Heat Rises there. He gets the kill while in air. And it seems to tack on what appears to be four more seconds. Four or five more seconds. So yeah, I guess as long as you're getting kills in the air, you can keep continuously proccing something like Heat Rises over and over again. Boys, Mountaintop is about to become disgusting. Do you know that? Can you imagine just floating around as a warlock with Mountaintop with perfect in-air accuracy? If anybody asks, you didn't hear that from here, okay? You heard that from somebody else's channel. Now, moving on, we see him pop his super, which was kind of a letdown. Now, there was actually two things at play here. Number one, it showed an Icarus dash cooldown of one second. And I don't know if that cooldown requires him to stop throwing swords for a second. I, I don't know. All I do know is that the speed of Dawnblade is supposed to be much slower next season with the sandbox changes because you can't take advantage of burst glide, but you're supposed to depend on Icarus dash in order to get that proper glide up. Unfortunately, we didn't get to see that at work. I wanted to see some almost pseudo skating on the Warlock class. Not that I'm thinking about putting on a dress. 
address. But if I was, I just want to know what I'm getting myself into, okay? Now, next up, it shows the Titan on a Sentinel, of all things. My lord. With all the solar changes that are coming, you'd think they would have showed us some Burning Maul action. Then they panned over to another Warlock. This guy is also rocking Top Tree Domblade. Now, he pops his super, and he doesn't get an Icarus Dash cooldown. So, obviously, something happened with the other guy that actually gave him an Icarus Dash cooldown. I I'm not sure. Somebody let me know in the comments below if you know anything about that. But regardless, we didn't actually see him Icarus Dash. So, I'm not even sure how fast it actually picks up your momentum, as we didn't get to see it. Now, we do see a sexy fusion rifle here, which I'm under the impression is, like, maybe main ingredient archetype. Looks pretty quick. Now, notice this buff right here. Tenderizer. He throws his grenade out and his melee, and it immediately seems to proc the perk Tenderizer. Now, whether this is something that someone else gave him, or maybe this is something tied to the artifact, I have no idea. I don't think this is affiliated with the subclass reworks, but it's something new, and it could just be something related to this activity. He also shot a rocket at this unstoppable champion. Scared him so bad that guy jumped straight off the map. Look at that shit. I guess it works, boys. Now, it also shows the reload speed with underdog, which is pretty quick. I mean, that's pretty fast. What's that on the same speed level as something like a rally barricade? Now, we also get to see the auto rifle shooting. I don't know. I think it's a 720. I want to say it's a 720. My god, is it fast? I almost felt like they were fast forwarding this. Could be a 720, though, or a 600. My eyes deceive me, but it's been forever since I used an auto rifle, so I'm not even sure. It does have a pretty decent max size there at 49, which honestly puts it in line to be either a 600 or a 720. So I'm actually leaning more toward a 600 than a 720. And that's pretty much it, guys. That's the stream, boys. I uh, I wish there was more to show. But again, we'll have some patch notes in front of us next Tuesday, going over all the changes that are coming, and we'll be individually reviewing all of these things. In the meantime, guys, we have a lot of reviews to get out. I still have a ton of weapons to review before next Tuesday to wrap up Season of the Undying. So fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.